Hello everyone, this is David Ellis and I'm back with an, another vibe show, thinking in the past. And so today what we're going to be doing is part two of the show we did last week because we got a lot of comments about it and we decided to extend the show. So once again, I'm going to bring in Amy. Hey, thank you for having me again. Hey Amy, you recovered from our little mind bending show from Ooh, yesterday. Man. Yeah, I think my dreams, something happened. Yeah. Something got sorted out. <laughs> this is being recorded after the uh, Mind Bending show, which Andrew, myself, Don, Amy, and Jason did. Um, that talking was, yeah. yeah, that was the talking stick show. We took over the talking stick. <laughs> and so today we are going to be talking about part two of common mistakes made by wellness and spiritual enthusiasts. So we did a whole um, examination of people who are wellness and spiritual enthusiasts. And today what we're going to do is um, do a further examination of them because we didn't quite cover everything in the first episode. So you ready, Amy? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Continuing from last week, let us start with the concept of making wellness and spirituality, your central and only focus. So it's kind of like fanaticism, except it works a little bit differently. So this is how it works, okay? I have become um, a spiritual person. I am doing, I don't know, let's use yoga, or I've become a gym person. But then it, I realize it makes me different than the rest of the people. So mm -hmm. I got to push them away. I have to shun them. Mm -hmm. because they don't understand me and for that i say get over yourself amy have you yeah have you seen that kind of stuff i have seen that kind of stuff i <laughs> i i've seen that kind of stuff <gasps> and yes. i uh, yes i've been part of that kind of stuff and it uh I don't even know how where to go, but there's so many thoughts running through right now. Like, which one do I pick? Like, which one do I pick? Oh, we have time, so you could pick any which okay. one you want. Okay. So, what makes them get on their high horse and think that they're better than? Um, I think it has something to do with I've discovered some new, advanced knowledge that the other people do not have. <sighs> they're ignorant. They're living. You know what? In um, the um, secret societies, they refer to um, the people who do not know of spiritual knowledge as the profane, okay? Mm -hmm. From which we derive the word profanity, which means is a lower kind of human being. Mm -hmm. And in the spiritual circles, you, you meet people who've been meditating a week and then all of a sudden they're like, no, I can't be with these people anymore. I see all their flaws and so on. The flaws were always there. Yeah, they were, weren't they? Correct. Yeah. They were always there. Yeah. And they're going to be there um, after you get off your high horse. After. Okay, but wait a minute. What about what about the inside that you work that you do? You don't see your own flaws, but you see everybody else's flaws? Here's the thing. I think a lot of people who fall into this category, they do projection. And so... Let's say they're looking at somebody who says, that person is ignorant, that person doesn't understand compassion and stuff like that. It's because they, <clears throat> they themselves had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they just try to push people away because they're different than me. And that's when you get into this cult-like behavior, right? Yeah. And it never ends well, Amy. It never ends well. No. It's kind no. of funny. It's kind of funny because I watched a wellness coach I, I will call him a wellness coach and he had people who would come into his mentorships and wellness this man was charging twenty five thousand dollars for a coaching certification and then i went on one of these um, um internet boards and there were a bunch of family members complaining that their family member went into debt borrowed money from them just to pay yeah. for this man's courses, right? 
Yeah. And I'm like, the problem with it is that this man promised them that if they got onto the coaching bang wagon, they could make that money back. And if they didn't make it back, it was because they're not trying hard enough and they need internal coaching to get to that level. And I'm like, no, hmm. no, no, it's COVID. Okay, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. have other things on their mind, you know, like dying, I guess, than having to deal with stuff. But there are some people whose brains are very malleable. Yes. And they fall into this category where they've gotten this new knowledge. It's like somebody becoming a born-again Christian. Oh, yeah. True. And they can't deal with you sinners anymore. And they can't deal with us anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a hierarchy kind of thing. It's like, uh, oh, okay. I don't, I don't get this. I'm not. Oh, see, I can't even grasp it. I can't even grasp. I don't it. even try. It David. doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Uh, look, I have had um, a situation where um, it wasn't a family member. It was a friend of mine, and he became a born again Christian. And I asked him why it is that he was um, pushing people away. Well, not like that, but not in these words. Mm. And he said to me, because the Bible says the light must not mix with the darkness, I bursted out, I burst out laughing. I yeah. could not contain it. That was some of the most funny shit yeah. I have seen in a while. Okay? The light must not mix with the darkness. That's the ethos behind that. Yeah. And it also feels like parroting. You're parroting somebody else's teachings. No, it's when these people give yeah. their, their sovereignty over and the sovereignty says you cannot tolerate anything that is out of their league. So a lot of spiritual people are like that. I see it in their comments on social media. We're in a, so, a spiritual community and you could tell the people that have gone a little bit too far. Yeah. <laughs> what does going too far mean? It means that like, if you have a family, you have friends, and you are the one who changed. Mm -hmm. Own it. You are the one who changed. They didn't change. Yeah. Right? They're still going to be the same party people, drinking alcohol, getting into yeah. bar fights that they were when you were hanging out with them. Yeah. You have to adapt. And for that matter, don't adopt the evangelical, I must bring them into the light either. Because that's just being <laughs> arrogant on your part. Who's to say that you are right? Exactly. That's right. That's why we are sovereign beings, because we do it how we feel it to be. Mm -hmm. I remember you know? there's a, there's a, you remember, you know, you remember a guy called Frank Sinatra? I do. He sang the song, I did it my, my way. way. Yes. Yeah. Like that. It's I remember. Exactly these um these old songs they are they were full uh -huh. of lots of principles so yeah let's move on to the next mistake that yeah. is made thinking that your way is the only oh, way <laughs> oh boy <sighs> i know okay. i don't care what you call yourself you might be a witch you might be yeah. um what other little factions are there? Some people are witches. Some people are, are brethren. Some people are um, um, galactic. They're part of the galactic community. I don't give a shit where you guys are coming from. I really don't. <laughs> whatever you're learning and whatever information you have is only part of the story. Part. Well, so true. And so the thing is, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. Is that they learn this or whatever it is that they're learning and then they don't that's all they know that's all they're that there's no new learning of anything does that make sense so for me i'm personally i'm always like oh this way oh this path oh this looks you know the the thing that i want to learn it's kind does of funny because yeah it's kind of funny because a lot of people they believe that this is the way that things should be done mm-hmm in this particular way, it's very rigid. It feels very rigid. They don't want to learn anything else, Amy. No. Okay? Right. 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 And so they believe that people 
who are doing something different. Mm-hmm. People are doing something different. They're, um, how should I say, flaky, right? Mm-hmm. So like, Amy, you just said you, do, you think this path, that path, and the other thing. Yeah. And they think that you exploring other paths means that you lack commitment. Yes. Well, right. But it really doesn't to me. No, because it's educating yourself. And for those of you yeah. who um, think in this sort of narrow-minded way, um, whatever path you're on is not the only way, okay? Mm-mm. Because how are you different from a Christian or uh, uh, any right. form, one right. from the um, religion. Abrahamic religions if it is that you are thinking in this narrow kind of way? And I used to be that, this narrow kind of way. Until what, was I... that, what was that like? <laughs> what? Well, I, I probably was like the person like, oh, I know everything. I know, you know, but you know, you know that I don't know the Bible that well. But, <laughs> <We're not going. laughs> but don't go there. But what I'm saying is I followed the Catholic religion to, mm-hmm. you know, every week, didn't miss, you know, like, you know, these are, these, that's a sin, all these sins, that's a sin. And so it got to be where, wait a minute. Then I went out and I found these, you know, certain friends and you're like, you can do this. You can do that. What? (laughs) Like they helped me open my eyes, basically. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand the value of actually learning different paths. Okay. Um, I've been in a number of different paths. Mm -hmm. I've been through a number of different schools, a number of different initiations myself. Yeah. I could pretty much tell you. That one thing, um, it sort of connects to the other thing. So as an example, you mentioned Christianity. You're not going to understand Christianity really well unless you understand the pagan origins from which it springs. Okay? Because they don't understand what marriage is. You're not going to understand what marriage is if you don't understand where that institution comes from and where it originated from. All right, and its roots are in paganism. Trust me when I tell you that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's a number of other things that you're not going to necessarily understand. Um, let's say if you are Christian, and even for the people who are very spiritual, for the people who are into like I don't know witchcraft or um, paganism, your history is entirely enmeshed with the Catholic Church. Trust me when I say that. <laughs> You guys mm-hmm. are very much a measure of the, the Catholic Church, right? Because paganism is not just like something that happened in Salem a couple of centuries back. This thing has been around since we were evolving as human beings, since we st- started to walk upright. A lot of people do not know that, and a lot of people just figure that they know this little body of knowledge and so on. And then there are people who become arrogant with it, like... Even within the little factions, there are little factions, sub factions. Mm-hmm. So, like Christianity, yes, Catholics and Protestants and mm-hmm. and um, and revivalists and Baptists and Methodists and all of those things. And every one of them believes that our way is the only way. Yes. Oh my gosh, so true, so true. <laughs> and I have to say that what helped me get out of that type of um, you know, way of rigid and this is the only, you know, religion was kind of investigation on my part. Yes. Investigating, why am I in this religion? I know that my parents brought me up this way. I never thought that I could get out of it, though. (laughs) It was like it took these certain people that came into my life to actually say, no, there's another way. What are you talking about? Yes, and the thing about it is that there's usually a punishment or consequence for thinking any other way apart from what that little path has for you. And I say to you that if you're going to surrender your sovereignty to any little body of knowledge, any little path, any little faction, Mm -hmm. then what is the point? You are not... (sighs) Yeah. You you become a static human being. You cannot grow because you're in this little little corner of the world okay so honestly i would implore people who fall into this category pick up a book from something you don't like and something you don't want anything to do with and read that book 
I challenge myself every day, okay? Yeah. You're talking to someone who deliberately goes to uncomfortable places <laughs> every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. And in yoga, that is actually called tapas, which is voluntary self-challenge. Okay? So, Amy? Yeah. Give me a book to read. No, you could no, no. I, I, anything that anything that you would never have anything to do with. Pick up a book yeah. and read up on it and educate yourself. Yeah. Don't take somebody else's word for it or whatever the case may be. It's just not right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which brings us to our next issue: the surrendering of critical thinking. Ooh. Let me ask you guys a question. Because Amy and I had a very um, spirited discussion before this broadcast. <laughs> so we're going to bring it in with a, uh, with a friend of ours, Klaus Wrigley. Mm -hmm. Let's say that you're a Christian. And we're going to get to the spiritual and wellness people in a while. And I tell you, um, yeah, so today I want you to take all your knowledge out of it, guys. And just listen to this part. I'm a priest. I come to you. I say, yo, Amy, yeah, we're having a mass and um, we're going to eat the blood and body of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. All right. Cr critical thinking aside, that's what we're doing. And you're like, no, <laughs> let's not do that today. Right. And so people generally tend to think that, oh, okay, let's see now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do something very pagan. We're eating the blood and body of um, a man. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amy. Which I've done. You're, 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 you're Catholic, so you've eaten. I mean, I have. eaten a lot of that body. And I was a Eucharistic minister. I gave it. <laughs> oh, the, Jesus Christ. I know. Wow. I know. Present. Pleasant thoughts. Yes. yes. So, you know, this is so fascinating because I never questioned it. I never investigated it. Nothing. No. No. So you had a self-replenishing body, which you keep eating and eating over <laughs> decades, centuries even. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds unpleasant um, enough. That sounds pleasant enough. Okay. Let's go to the spiritual people. Mm -hmm. You're a spiritual person and I run up to you and I say to you, um... Yeah, in order for us to um, ascend, we must all get spiritual wedgies. <laughs> so the first set of people go up first, and we're giving wedgies out. You would think that critical thinking is going to click in at some point in time as they know this sounds a little bit off, a little bit wrong. A little bit wrong. All the way. But it doesn't. For it a lot doesn't. of people. Yeah. You remember Waco, Texas? Remember mm -hmm. Jim Jones, Diana? Yep. Yeah. Um, so they're coming to um break up our little spiritual club. So the best thing for us to do is um to poison ourselves and die. Critical <sighs> thinking. I know. These were spiritual people. You wonder what they were. I don't know. I, I. Where did they think they were ascending? Right? They thought they were going to go see God. Well, they I technically um, ascended in one way, shape, yeah, or form. In another, one way, like little ghosts running, floating out of their bodies, they ascended. My point. Uh, my point is, like, at no point in time did anybody think, "Yo, probably this was a bad idea." <laughs> no. uh, probably, I'm not going to drink the grape juice. Mm -mm. They mm. chose to all go and kill themselves, and pri and the prime directive is the highest directive you have in your mind, and that is survival. Okay, and they countermanded it because of stupidity. So, <sighs> for those of you who have lost your critical thinking, for those of you who are doing stupid shit, stupid stuff, and I mean stupid stuff. I don't care whether it's pulling your air lobe at night. So that you could see the... Uh, what is that? Okay, I don't know that. 
Oh, there's all sorts of things all, on the internet. You just need to do a casual thing. They have yeah. they have people doing all sorts of stuff that has no basis in actual ritual or anything like that. People don't cite the sources from where they come from, and people just follow it. Yes, that's so true. So how how do you how do you know how do we, how do you know? I think that you have an innate wisdom. I think your mm -hmm. first directive as a spiritual person is to develop your innate wisdom. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself on um, the monkey bars trying to reach the Palladians um, by swinging from one monkey bar to another, um, something in your mind should tell you, I'm doing stupid stuff. <laughs> yes. Right? But if it doesn't, uh, my suggestion would be you pick a book, a book and you read. Mm -hmm. You read and you read. Okay. Okay. So wait, let me just stop. So that's like an extreme, like doing to me, that's extreme going on a monkey bar. I would know. Well, that's what is like this. But, but to people, some people, I that know. would not be an extreme though. I know. Go ahead. But how about for just the subtle, what would be like a subtle thing that. <sighs> a subtle thing would be something along the lines of. Yeah. I have my own little Facebook group on one side of the internet. And yeah. we don't deal with the other, uh, other people, the other spiritual people. If the other spiritual people are putting out content, we're not liking their posts. We're not commenting. We're not interacting oh, with their posts. Oh, yeah. That would be a subtle thing. You want to know what that subtle thing is about? It is ignorance, lack of critical thinking and ignorance because it doesn't help the individual. It's a kind of, it's a kind of insular thinking where... We don't deal with these other people because they're different from us. They're in another Facebook group. So we don't click oh. on their post. We don't like their post, right? We're on our little club here. And then you look at these people and you're like, I guess you guys are not developing and y'all are not growing anywhere, are y'all? Hmm. Mm. Right? So these are the kinds of things. It's better to promote the entire spiritual community as a collective. Yeah. Competition is never a good thing. Collaboration over competition is always a good thing. We've said that several times. Yeah. But people lack cl a critical thinking and they're fanatic and they're insular and they're largely underdeveloped. So they're going to stay in their little clubs. Yes, that's a good. I like that. I, I okay. like that. Yeah. So the, the, there's, yeah. there is that. There is which, that. Which brings us to the next issue. <laughs> common mistakes made by... Um, spiritual people, they uh, they don't read. They don't read. Okay, so a lot of people throw themselves into the, I feel everything. Mm -hmm. I feel this. I feel that. I feel, I feel the universe. I feel the tree. The tree is talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> it might help you to pick up a book and learn tree language or mm -hmm. learn about what it is that you're feeling or how to increase it, or harmonize it, or refine it. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes airy-fairy, kind of like... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, it becomes kind of like, I know, I'm thinking of that girl on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wish I had this. Uh, I know. This, uh, we're going to show it in the next show, I'm sure. Oh, you um, have to. Listen... Um, if, if, that's know. how you stop yourself from being airy fairy. I know a lot yeah. of you have gone past the point where y'all care, whether y'all sound woo woo on woo woo on airy fairy. Yeah. But let me explain to you how you stay grounded with the rest of us that still adhere to gravity. Um, <laughs> you read, yeah. okay? So the psychic sense, where does it come from? Right. How can I refine it? How can I expand it? How can I make it better? Mm -hmm. What kind of psychic sense am I displaying when it is that the tree starts talking to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is the tree talking to me? What kind of tree is this? Is the tree hungry? I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. You, When you don't understand what's going on, you pick up a book, you read, you listen to other people's examples. You may not have money to become... Um, go into a mentorship or whatever the case may be, but you certainly have a library in your hometown. Yeah. And a couple of hours a week 
a week. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting yeah. down and reading or talking to somebody who has experienced these things and getting an idea of if you can't read, then do secondhand reading. Find somebody mm -hmm. who reads a lot and pick their brain. That's how it's done. What you don't do is say, I'm talking to the tree. I feel, I feel, and it's enough for me to just feel. Because the next time you try to explain this to somebody else, you're not going to have the words to explain it. This is what you're going to sound like exactly. Yeah. So I looked at the tree and <laughs> we entered into dialogue and I felt the tree. And the tree felt me and we felt each other. And there was a whole bunch of feeling going on. And everybody's looking at you like, yeah. Yeah. How about explaining it like this? I went into the forest. I understand that at certain points of time in the year and certain phases of the moon, my psychic sense is going to be greater. I exploited, and it wasn't accidental, I exploited the fact that at certain points in time of the year and at certain phases of the moon, my psychic sense is going to be greater. And I entered into dialogue with the tree. It was because I was relaxed. It was because I was in the mind space to connect with the tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I reached out with the tree, not using force. I reached out with the tree using a willingness to communicate. And I began to f sense the vibrations of the tree. The tree was reaching out to me. It was trying to tell me stories because I read a book and I sat down and I meditated on how to bypass the conscious mind. I was able to receive the transmission from the tree. Does that sound different? Yeah, that does sound different. That yeah. Does. And it generally allows people to listen to you a little bit more. Now, for those of you who don't care, whether people listen to you because you're so woo-woo and you're so out there, I want to respectfully submit that you might have entered the category of being a fanatic. Mm -hmm. And you're going to push people away with your airy-fairy stuff. Yeah. Because they can't understand you. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I yes. agree with that. I had to work on my um, that kind of sixth sense with the yes. tree. Yeah. I had to I had to kind of like um I had to decipher like okay cuz the one this one tree was going to be cut down. And I sit on my patio in the morning it's where I meditate, right? And I knew he needed to be cut down. I know it's a he. <laughs> he gave me his name. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just so um I just heard it. If that makes sense. Yes. And, and for it's those not of you, a lot of words. It's not a lot of words. It's like just little bits of words. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Amy is quite the empath. She actually passed a flashcard, a psychic flashcard <laughs> test objectively. She's quite the empath. Not bad, Amy, actually, for her first time. Because a lot of people have been trying to pass that test for a while. Oh. And um, very few people have passed it. Um, for those of you who didn't watch um, our last show, go to our last show and scan the QR code. There is a psychic flashcard test that is put up there for you guys. It's the same test that the um, U.S. government was giving to um, its people when they were trying to train psychics. It's hilarious, but I, I don't understand why anybody would want to try to train psychics for espionage. But anyway, the case may be... Um, it's the same test. It's the same basis for the same test. And you guys can check it out and see why you fall on that scale. Okay? Yes. Which, I, mm, go ahead. No, I just wanted to finish with that. You know, your first your first um, kind of inclination is probably just a program, is, if that makes sense. Correct. Like, you know, you have to you have to take the layers off of those because that's probably not true because those come first to me this is how mm -hmm. i discovered it you know first you have to go through your programs and and disassemble them uh Correct. so so yeah so just a little thing out there that oh oh the tree is talking to me oh it said this 
It's a weird feeling. It doesn't happen like you think it's going to happen. How about that? Correct. Yes. And you still have to learn how to refine that process. Yes. All yes. right. Or else you're just, um, flo you're like a ship on the ocean while we have the ocean behind us. Oh, right. Yeah. You're like a ship on the ocean. You're being tossed about by the ocean. You have no control over your senses, psychic or otherwise, if mm -hmm. you do not refine them, which means that you need to learn some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You also need to learn when to switch it off. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to my prime primary empath joke. An empath walks into a bar. <laughs> That's the whole joke. That's where it ends. <laughs> That's where it ends. An empath walks into a bar. That's the entire joke. If you guys get where I'm coming from. <laughs> right. So yes. I suppose the next thing that we should probably um, talk about from the, the concept of feeling and not feeling. Mm -hmm. is this idea of trying to rapidly develop, mm -hmm. like trying to get there quickly. Mm -hmm. I must transcend today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know intuitively that pe you know that people have been working at this for <laughs> decades, right? But you are the chosen one and you're going to ascend today. And you're willing to do whatever it takes to ascend today. So you hurry, scurry, helter, skelter everywhere. And you try to do this. You try to do that. You, you, like somebody tells you, cut off your airlobe and you will ascend quicker. You're going to do that too. You're going to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. This kind of feverish, fervent energy will not get you anywhere. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And we, we know people like this, don't we, Amy? Mm -hmm. We do. We do. It will not get you anywhere. No, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Chill the self. Relax I yourself. Was just, I just said that word, relax. That's the word I felt was like, mm -hmm. you just relax into it. Because if you force it, nothing comes from force. What? Correct. What can you gain from forcing something? I think a lot of people chose, they, they, they choose not to relax. They think that they they need to get somewhere really quickly. Yeah. yeah. And the truth of the matter is you have all the time in the world. Yeah. You absolutely have all the time in the world. Yeah. You do. Right. Because if you keep forcing and forcing yourself to develop, you are going to be like the fruit forced ripe. Yeah. Have you ever eaten forced ripe fruit? Uh, it looks really cool on the outside, but when you bite it. Right. Yeah. This should have stayed on the tree a little longer. Yeah, it should have stayed on the tree a <laughs> hell of a lot longer. <laughs> right. Right. And yes, yeah, so the things that happen to people who are forced ripe spiritualists is that they don't see their blind spots because they skipped over the learning process. Yeah. Yes. And so what happens is that they they develop what I call spiritual Tourette syndrome. Right? Whoa. Stuff starts slipping out from the side, right? And right. it's hilarious to <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Because this is a learning process. So this the same people I described earlier, all these people that are in the in the um the the little the little factions of the internet. It's my face group uh, Facebook group. Yeah. Right? And then you put them on any kind of broadcast, and then it's like, well, I think, and I think this, right? And they're doing things that and people are looking at it like, yo, you need yeah. to chill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't be forced ripe because it's going to slip. You're going to slip out and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And people are going to see your your slip. All puns mm -hmm. intended. You remember mm -hmm. that saying? Your mm -hmm. slip is showing, ma'am. Your slip. Oh. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so your slip uh... is showing, ma'am. So there is uh, uh, there uh, there is that, and I I, I I honestly even in that faction, even in that group of people, you have people who are. Um, way out there, like mm -hmm. you have people who want to become force ripe, so they go and get the tools of the trade, right? So it's not enough to my to buy myself a huge phallic crystal <laughs> for a thousand dollars. No, no. I'm going to buy myself a super huge phallic crystal <laughs> for two thousand dollars instead, and I'm like, yeah. 
Yeah. All the prettiness that you have, mm-hmm. all the prettiness that you have, you have the crystal, you have the the little board, the, the little tarot cards. There are people with a million tarot card decks in, in the house. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you've mastered the first one. Yes, exactly. Exactly. If you've mastered tarot reading, it would be nice. If you know how to tarot read, that would be good. There are people who don't even know how to tarot read and they have a hundred decks in their house. Yes. All right. I'm not talking about the people who right. who already know the tarot. Okay. Yeah. There are people with tarot decks, crystals, um, magic wands, um, Ouija boards, dangerous, right? Mm-hmm. Um um, Ouija boards. What else is there? Sigils. There are people with pendulums. All that pendulum. stuff. Their house is decked out to the nines. You got like the, like the the, the the little chandeliers with the crystals in it and so on. And they have the amethyst mats and they have all the healing devices and so on. They don't know anything about these things. Listen, mm, you yeah. cannot force ripe spirituality by buying a bunch of shit, putting it in your house and deciding that. Yeah, it's going it's, to help you if you don't know how to use. It's not going to come off well. It's not going to come off well. Yeah, because they want it now, and they yeah. think they need to buy everything now. Yeah, exactly. Because they, it's it's too much work to learn everything. So listen, if you have a bunch of tarot decks in your house, please learn to read the first one first. And I would suggest you start with the Rider Waite deck because it's the one that has this mm-hmm. greater spiritual egregore around it. Everybody knows what the Rider Waite deck is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so I would suggest that you start with that. You learn how to read it or you find somebody who knows how to read it to teach you how to read it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> what you don't do is you find yourself, I'm forced to write. I have a tarot deck. I am going to go on a spiritual broadcast and read the tarot off the top of my head. You have no idea what you're playing with. You Ooh, are st- yeah. Dangerous. You are, st- you are straining out your psychic sense. Why? Mm-hmm. Because there's damage done in that, huh? Yeah. There's damage done to the individual in that. Yeah. When you are using tools and trying to amplify your reach and stuff like that and try to expand yourself to the heavenly gates or the pearly gates or whatever, literally and figuratively, <laughs> without caution. Mm. Yeah, so what do you do when... Uh, you want to become a tarot card. I know it's like networking kind of more mm-hmm. with people rather than l- looking up a YouTube because how do you know? Just All because right. it has uh, 200 million likes <laughs> or, or what, that does not mean anything. Oh, ouch. Thank you. That would be the next mistake, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Going on social media and expecting to learn about <laughs> oh, the no, cringe, the cringe. Like- there's not a lot of good out there. Okay. Um, 90% of the people who are on social media teaching you all how to do ritualistic practice, teaching you all how to read tarot cards, teaching you all a bunch of stuff, um, they didn't learn it from anybody. They probably picked up a book, read it, and were and they're out on social media and they're doing yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Plus Guys. they can plus they can write up these little pretty, you know, one page, you know, uh, what do you call them? Your page that you would say this is my business. And they Correct. can write so many pretty things that that appeal to you because they know how to do it. Right now I have an AI that writes it for, <laughs> for the... <laughs> well, you know, right. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like Yeah, I do. You do. I know. Right. So it's the prettiness and the stuff they get on social media and they say, well, I'm going to do a reading and stuff like that. There are very few genuine sources on the net. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you guys, if you're going to go the social media route to learn stuff, Mm -hmm. here's what I would suggest that you do. The person needs to have a bio of their experience before you take them seriously. If you go to somebody's page and there's no bio, as in, where did you come from? Yeah. What schools of thought did you go to? Where did you learn to do this? Okay? 
and I this is not um academic elitism. This is I want to know that mm -hmm. you have proficiency before mm -hmm. I learn from you, before I give you money, before I give you time, energy, and attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you started with the tarot cards on Tuesday and on Saturday, you've opened up shop with you. <laughs> yes. If you bought the tarot cards on Tuesday and you're th uh, uh, and by Saturday you have a website and you're ready and you're open for business, I am going to respectfully suggest that you probably need to do a little bit more work before mm -hmm. you decide to become a psychic or whatever medium, whatever it is. And for those of you who just go on the internet, you do a Google search for, I want uh, someone to teach me tarot. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that pops up at the top of the page with the most page visits and most likes, right. listen, that these things are manipulated. Do not trust yes. the digital age. Yes. So manipulated. And you're My, being manipulated. <laughs> yeah, my background um, is in law and business, but I am very much into technomancy, technology. And I could pretty much tell you guys that it doesn't... <sighs> it's, so, it's so sad. If you have technology and people are pushing the search results up to the top and they say there's a million mm -hmm. people who, who did these page visits and so on, it is because they're artificially pushed up to the top of the page in Google or wherever the case may be. And so, guys, um, when you're looking for people to teach and so on, um, make sure that when you go to that person's site, you look on that person's site and you see that that person is a um, has some sort of background, has some sort of learning, yeah. Yeah. some sort of results even, testimonials. These are things that what people are saying about them. Yeah. It's kind of word of mouth too. That's how I've got. That's how I found mine. Anyways, word of mouth. Yeah, that's also a good thing because yeah. it's what other people are saying about them. Yeah, yeah. And once again, critical thinking is absolutely important. So, for instance, if somebody you go on somebody's website and they're telling you about if you shave all the hair on your head. <laughs> uh oh! Did you do that? <laughs> Then you will receive enlightenment because the hair is blocking oh. the rays <laughs> oh of God. knowledge from getting into your head. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Hmm. Now that I think of that, I could probably put up a web page in a zero second you spot. Could. You yeah. could. Yeah. Yeah. And shave you your didn't. heads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so this is, if you use your common sense, use your critical thinking yeah. and, um, approach it that way. All right. So here's some other ancillary mistakes that people make. Hmm. The type one and type two errors, assuming something is when it isn't and assuming something isn't when it is. Okay. Ooh. We call that type one and type two errors. Okay. You have a spiritual experience. You assume it's a spiritual experience and it probably isn't. Okay. Then you have a spiritual experience and the universe is genuinely trying to tell you, yo, pay attention. And you assume that it isn't. It's just my imagination. Oh, God. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. And, and, and it's like, oh, it's, it's just my imagination. Let me tell you the difference between type one and type two errors. Yeah. Okay. So like that, um, that, that um, TikTok you, sh you sent me, mm -hmm. you go to Walmart right you run into the sliding door and a piece of glass breaks out <laughs> breaks off of the sliding door okay you pick up the glass and you take it home and you say the universe is talking to me <laughs> no it's because you weren't paying attention you walked into the sliding door exactly okay yes yes all right the universe is showing you numbers throughout your day yes. you're seeing one 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 wherever you go and you're seeing one on one at 11 minutes past one, right? The car in front of you has one, one, one in front of it, right? You're seeing all those things and you're deciding, hmm, yes, it's probably my imagination. La, 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 la. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and the universe is exactly like this. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. The universe mm -hmm. is like, how? Oh, no, you think you dance. You have to be open to what nature is trying to tell you. Yeah. Because here's something that I do know, and this is a piece of um, advice, and it's a bit of spiritual wisdom that everybody who has been in spirituality for a long time knows. When you don't listen to the universe, it stops speaking to you. It does. That's I, how people become dense. Yeah. If you don't listen, it'll stop speaking. Would you talk to somebody who's not listening to you? No, you'll just stop speaking. Wow. Okay. So if the universe is trying to show you something, the more you listen, the more it'll start speaking to you. For those of you, and we're going to get to that in the next section. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are frustrated that none of your practice is going well, and you don't know what the stumbling block is. I've reached a plateau and I can't raise any higher. I'm going to tell you it's down to the type 1 and type 2 error problem. Okay? Because the universe was trying to speak to you and you would not listen. You would not hear. You would not adhere. You just ignored it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times. So I'll give you a running okay. example and illustration. Yeah. Let's do it. You decide to become um, somebody who does magical operations. You decide to do a ritual. The ritual is to um, heal a family member who's hurt themselves probably in the gym since we're dealing with wellness enthusiasts, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Like from our last show, my, mm -hmm. my, mm -hmm. my poor butt. <laughs> from the squats yeah okay all right is to heal a family member okay then you finish the ritual you put out your candles and you close the circle okay you go to bed for the whole night you are dreaming of turmeric for the whole night <laughs> you wake up in the morning you turn on your radio right and the announcer was, uh, is saying, boy, love me some turmeric in my food. Okay? Mm -hmm. You go to the restaurant to get your breakfast. You go to, I don't know, Starbucks. I don't know what people do for mm -hmm. breakfast stuff. Right? You go to Starb Starbucks and Starbucks says, oh, we're added turmeric to the tea today. <laughs> and you're not listening. Yeah. You're yeah. not listening. So you go home. And your family member is in utter pain. Oh, my God, I think something is inflamed. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't occur to you that you have had turmeric recurring and recurring throughout your entire morning. You say to the family member, well, just walk it off, man. Walk it off. Walk it off. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yes. What was the point of doing the ritual? Because the universe meets people who meet it halfway. God yeah. meets people who meet him halfway. You understand where I'm coming from, where this is concerned, mm -hmm. right? The thing has been recurring and recurring and put in your face and the, the universe can't like, hello, hi. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Turmeric, right? And so a lot of people choose to mm. not um, not pay attention. And so that uh, that is a that is a type two error, okay? That is, that is. Just look it up. Look what, maybe if you don't even know what that means, look it up. Yeah, it means that you um, assume that something is and it isn't, or something mm -hmm. is, isn't, and it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a type two. Something isn't, but it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, turmeric, the universe has been trying to tell you give that man some tur turmeric. Right. Because <laughs> he's inflamed and so on. But you asked for it in your ritual. You asked for the answer. The universe gave you the answer, yet fail to pick it up right is it expectations correct you expected it but you have to start from the beginning so something doesn't end well if it doesn't start right so if you are going to start magical practice or magical operation or communion or dialogue with the universe yeah. which is what magic is really right or manifestation as the case may be when you ask for something it's a done deal the universe is gonna give it to you for sure yeah you, uh -huh. It's your choice whether or not you're picking it up or letting it go. 
Yeah, because right? it's that's true. That's so true. Uh, Whew. That's type one and type that. two errors, which brings me to the next issue. When you are picking up stuff from the universe, use it wisely. Right? So I'm mm -hmm. going to continue my analogy. Mm -hmm. You've done your ritual. You've listened to this podcast, this broadcast, and you've <laughs> said to yourself, well, David said the universe is going to answer me. So you dream about turmeric. You wake up in the morning, right? You announce on the radio, says turmeric. You go to Starbucks. You would in turmeric. Ah, turmeric is the answer, right? Then you go home and you realize there's only one teaspoon left of turmeric in the um, <laughs> bin. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to use that for myself. Let me just put some turmeric yeah. in the tea. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yes. That's not what you asked the turmeric for. There is something mm -hmm. called reversal in this life. Okay? That is not what you asked the turmeric for. Because mm -hmm. what the universe is going to look at you like for real? <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you, you just did that. I d There's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with him. When the universe mm -hmm. gives you something, use it for the greatest good. And use it for what it was intended. Okay? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have these manifestation spells that they do. They, it sounds something like, um, I manifest um, riches and wealth for myself so that I could help myself and my family. Okay? Universe gives them a million dollars. They go and blow it on for Ferraris, cocaine, and <laughs> hookers. <laughs> Uh, and the reversal is a hell of a thing. Reversal is when you do that disrespect mm -hmm. and the universe gives you something what we call a reversal. And what that reversal looks like is like, you may drink the turmeric, the person that it was intended for will heal and you're going to get paid. Right? That's what a reversal is. Okay, when you are doing these kinds of operations and you figure that you're into ritual and so on, there's certain very um, narrow rules that you have to fit into. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And when you go outside the rules, trust me when I tell you, it's not usually a good thing. Yeah. Whoa. Which is why the majority of these affirmations, manifestation, um, rituals, or whatever else, ends with, if I don't do this, mine be the reverse. Okay? Mm -hmm. There are two popular endings for any of those kinds of um, operations. One is, so must it be, so must it be. Let me mm -hmm. translate mm -hmm. that to English. And mine be the reverse. Okay? Meaning that you understand that if you break certain kinds of rules, things will be reversed. The operation will be reversed. Okay? Yeah. Wow. And that's a heavy responsibility, which is why it's not popular anymore. Nobody's saying mine be the reverse anymore. Because they know, they know. Just because you don't say it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, however. That's right. what I'm just going to say. I was just going to say. Just because you don't say it in your, in your little wording doesn't mean that it won't happen to you. Mm -hmm. So these are the kinds of mistakes in terms of operatic mistakes because... A lot of people don't know why they're I'm not progressing, which brings us to the last mm. issue. Mm. Getting frustrated. Yeah. So you figure that you're that kind of person who should be somewhere at a certain point in time, but none of your rituals work. Um, <laughs> everything you try to do work, you're trying to get more clients and no matter what you try to do, no matter how many posts you put out on Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many posts you put out on Facebook, no matter whatever you try to do, it's not working for yeah. you. And you're wondering, why isn't anything working? Is there something that I'm doing that's wrong? I don't understand. Let me explain something to you. Have you ever seen a child losing its mind yeah gimme 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 and the parent looks at mm -hmm. the child and say yeah you're not getting it because you're you're behaving badly mm -hmm. yeah that's what's happening mm -hmm. yeah frenetic energy manifested nothing 
It's so true. But how do they that. how do they know that what they're putting out? Well, I, I get that they're frustrated, but can they be complacent too? It's well. Do they really want that? Do they? You know what I mean? You see, like you see, the type one and type two eras always leads into that kind of horrifying existence. So you could be um, complacent because you're falling into type one and type two, and then you you realize nothing is working for you. Yeah, the plateau kind of you plateau. You're not you're not going anywhere. You're not manifesting anything. Yeah. You are the world's most horrible magician. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're not not only you're not um you're not expanding in your consciousness and so on. So you're not seeing the reality. Your psychic senses are not developing. You mm -hmm. are not expanding internally. Mm -hmm. Your intellect is not developing. Your body is at the same um, rate of, of aging that it always was. And it's accelerating and you can't do anything to stop it. Okay? Yeah. And people get frustrated. They get angry. And they want to do things now. And that's why people jump off of the spiritual path because it's not working for them. So they go to the, that's how a lot of people ask, how do people go into spirituality, reverse, and then go into religion? It's because spirituality requires you to do shit by yourself. Yes. And religion allows you to outsource your stuff to some other being external to yourself. And it's just easier. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. I should have a Ferrari. I should have so, <laughs> right. So these are the kinds of things that happened. Um, I would think that, honestly, Amy, I would think that people who fall into this category of frenetic energy, my first advice to you is to calm to hell down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take a chill pill. Take a real chill pill. Get yeah. some... Get some yeah. etheric weed or something, right? Something. Not real weed. Chill out. Yeah. Yeah. Step away from it. You know what I mean? Not step away from what you want to do, but take a break. Yeah. Take a, a tall gla glass of yeah. STFU. STFU. Right? Yeah. Don't, let's not even get into okay. that. <laughs> right? No. All right. Take a tall glass of shut up and yeah. chill out. And breathe, mm -hmm. right? And start again. Yep. What you don't do is keep pushing the boulder up the hill when you know damn well it's expending energy and the boulder's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You guys get that. Exactly. Wow. You guys get that. So when you get frustrated, you calm down. Start again. Start with the um, the ability to close your eyes and get into what it is that you want to manifest, what it is that you want to do, right? Be at peace. Do your operations or your work, whether mm -hmm. it be rituals or whatever the case may be, and just wait and listen to the universe in a calm mind and the universe will start cooperating with you again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When it realizes, oh, you finish your tantrum now? We good? Okay. We good. We good. Okay. We're ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Because the universe is actually on your side. The only yeah. person that's standing in your way is you. Yeah. That's so true. So true. Yes, I It really that. is. I understand that. So as an wow. example, if you're an empath, just as an example, mm -hmm. and you wanted to refine the empath sense, then what you would do and what you wouldn't do, as an example, is when you see things that make you feel icky, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, family situations, mm -hmm. instead of closing down your sense and trying to get away from it, expand it and see everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, let yeah. it come in and then let your um, brain see the little nuances inside of them. 
Okay? Mm, yeah. Because what the universe is trying to show you and what your, your empathic sense is trying to show you is the nuances, right? Because let me tell you, um, a lot of people do not like the um, empathic sense because they don't like feeling that icky kind of mm-hmm. nasty feeling that empaths usually feel on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> if they leave their house and mm-hmm. go to like, I don't know, a bar, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, right? But I am telling you that that sense can be controlled and it is one of the most useful senses because you could spot trouble from like a mile away. Mm-hmm. But you would need to recognize trouble. First of all, don't hide from it to be able to spot it in the future. Make sense? Makes sense to me. For sure. Yeah. So empaths who are listening to this, stop running. Stop running. Stop running. Yeah. Well, I love that word nuance. I don't know why. I just love that. Yes. You need to it, see it, the shades of uh, of emotions that people are experiencing. Yeah. The shades yeah. of emotions that they're experiencing. Because what you... Uh, uh, what you look at as that person is just being unfriendly has shades to it like insecurity yes. trauma as an example insecurity trauma and um, jealousy yes that's so true like in a I, family situation let's say uh-huh. the family dinner is an example a, yeah. a very good example of, of what i'm talking about <laughs> you go to a family dinner and then you have um siblings and so on and one sibling is thinking look at that you know, babe mm-hmm. in total control of herself, mm-hmm. B-I-T-C-H, mm-hmm. babe mm-hmm. in total control of herself, right? <laughs> All right. Who does she think she is? I think she, uh, I bet she thinks she's better than me. Mm-hmm. You get my point? I do. I right? sure but, do. But the, uh, what the empaths will feel is just ickiness. But yeah. when they open, they expand their sense, they can see the little shades of jealousy, trauma, yeah. and like, 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 all those different inadequacies and so on, right? And it's a very useful sense to have because once you see it once, you could detect it on everybody else around you, which may increase the icky feeling. I see why people shut themselves down, but it gives you an early warning system as to what to expect. No, I've I've been training in that. (laughs) And what it, what I figured out, could I just share what I figured out? Tell was me. When that would happen, I didn't understand the expansion. Now I do the, the nuances. I would be drained. It drains you, right? And I'm like, mm-hmm. why do I feel so drained? I mean, that was kind of like a happy little party. No, 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 no. <laughs> because when you expand it, you you see all the, like you were talking about the emotions in that. And then it's not, you go home not so drained because it's like, aha, I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you let it it, in. Yeah, when you let it in, it's almost the reverse of what we think we should do, right? Yes. And it works differently for other senses. Like, honestly, if you were precognitive, sometimes it doesn't pay to let it in, right? Right, right. (laughs) Right. But if if you're an empath, the quickest way out of it because the the draining feeling you're feeling is yeah. you resisting yes the oh the expansion yes it's you resisting like yeah i don't want to feel that i don't want to see that it's you yes. that's draining yourself a lot of the time so yeah once again an empath walks into a bar <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all right oh. guys we've come to the end of our show yeah. but what i want to do is give you an esoteric quiz uh, for those of you who are um, esoteric aficionados and spiritual aficionado, aficionados, this show should have helped you <laughs> with a mistake, but we're yeah. going to hammer home the point by giving you an esoteric quiz. You guys try to pass this quiz. Yes. I'm going to put it on screen. You guys can scan it. Okay, for mm. those of you who scan that quiz, try to take it. The pass mark is obviously 50%. Um, yeah, it'll test your knowledge and it'll test your abilities. We Last week, we tested your psychic sense. This week, we're testing your knowledge. Any objections? 
I love it. And love be it. willing to put yourself on the line because that's how yeah. you know where you are. Okay. Exactly. Amy, tell these people how they can get a hold of you. I think. Yeah. Yes, I have a show called Unscripted, and it's where I have guests come on, and we I ask a question, and we just chat about it. And it's like 20 minutes long. So if you'd like to get a hold of me, be a guest, uh, contact me through Messenger on Facebook or Pink Moon Lodge Podcast at gmail.com. Excellent. And for those of you who um, need to contact Amy, um, my name is David Ellis. Um, I am running Universal Citizen Media and a bunch of other things. In the future, we will be giving you guys solutions because I do realize where the spiritual community is headed in this technological age. So um, I will prov be providing you guys with tools to help you guys in your business. You can contact me at info at universalcitizentv.com. Okay. See you guys Bye. next week. meditation will aid in your recovery. If you've been experiencing cancer or any other serious illness in your life, this will aid in your recovery. I'm a spiritual counselor specializing in cases of trauma and illnesses. I practice out of the broom closet in Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm here to help you on your journey of healing and here to help you delve in, activate, and work with your body's natural healing capabilities. And so, so very tired. 19 and so, so very tired. So relaxed. And you. Hello there. My name is Juliette Caraman Van Schardenberg. And I want to welcome you to another meditation to help you reduce anxiety and stress. Now again, I'd like you to take a moment, relax, settle down 